x-ray visioning him in a sense. I, I was looking at all his organs, his heart, his, his liver, his kidneys. In my mind, while I'm laying hands on him, I'm seeing them healthy and whole. I'm seeing the power of God going into him and transforming him. That is a prayer of faith. I didn't see him sick and, 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 and frail. I saw him delivered. I saw him getting up and walking out of that hospital. Amen. Amen. My hope was in the promises of God. We lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's the word of God. Our hope needs to be in God. And so what happened? I, I told Benny, I said, Benny, I want you to cooperate with me. All right? I want you to get a picture of yourself getting well, being well, the end result, and walking out of the hospital and going on with life and doing the things you've always done. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I started talking to him about fishing. Maybe he'll try fishing again. They said it's been years since he's been fishing, but I said, go see yourself fishing. Amen. The bottom line is you want to see yourself successful. See yourself whole. See yourself well. See yourself the way the Word of God says you are. That's hope. Hallelujah. You know, the children of Israel failed to enter into the promised land because they had a picture of defeat instead of victory. That's right. uh, in Numbers 13, 33, it says, There we saw the giants and were like grasshoppers in our own sight, yeah. and so we were in their sight. That's right. they, they saw themselves <laughs> as failures, and so that they had no hope to go in there and reap the promise of God. The promised land belonged to them. A land flowing with milk and honey. God promised them. They got right up to the river Jordan and forget it. They said, oh, the giants are just too numerous. We can't do it. We can't overcome. And it's because they were looking at the problem instead of the promise. And in, in uh, Psalm, I don't have this up there, but in Psalm 78, why don't we just turn there real quick? This was just something that the Lord was reminding me of this morning. So, so um, in Psalm 78, verse 40. Isn't God good? Amen. Yes. Amen. This is talking about the children of Israel in that situation. When they saw the giants, and they said, we're like grasshoppers, in our own sight, and so we were in theirs. And then God's saying this. He says, How often they provoked me in the wilderness and grieved me in the desert. Yes, again and again they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited God. God, God told them, Go in and possess it. God said, It is yours. It was, it was called the promised land. The promise was there. They just had to, by faith, reach out and grab what God had for them. Instead, they looked at all the obstacles. And it says, they, look, look at verse 42. It says, and they did not remember his power. The day when he redeemed, what's, what, what is uh, hope? Redemptive vision. Isn't that right? So it says, the day when he redeemed them from the enemy, when he worked his signs in Egypt, and his wonders in the field of Zon. So, so because they forgot all the wonderful things God did for them, they lost hope. See, what hope will do is it will give you that confidence that no matter, God delivered me from this, he delivered me from that, and he's going to deliver me from the other thing. And when David confronted Goliath, he, he confronted him with hope. He said, you know what? God delivered me from the lion." And the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine, he's going down too, just like him. See, his hope was in God. The same God that delivered him from all those other things was the God who was going to deliver him from the giant. Can you see David's mind was on what God's promises were, God's faithfulness? God has never let, let us down before, and he's not going to do it again. Amen? He's never going to do it. And so... Um, God's taken care of me. He's blessed me before. He's going to bless me again. Amen. He's healed me before. I'm going to receive my healing again. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. And so, so here's the thing. We need to meditate on the promises. On God and His promises. 
See, meditating on God's promises keeps us single-minded and prevents us from wavering in unbelief. In James 1, 6 and 7, it says, But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. You limit God when you're wavering. When, when you got your mind on the promises of God, then you go, you, you, you go back over to the problems. And the promises of God, the problems, you're wavering. God, God wants you to keep focused, keep your hope, keep your faith on Him. Because that's how our, our faith operates. And, and so we've got to stay single-minded on God, not double-minded. Because you're, you're wavering. You, you bounce back and forth. You're unstable. And God doesn't want us to be unstable. See, see, hope is an anchor of our soul. That's what the Bible calls it. In Hebrews, let's jump over to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews 6. God's so good. He's just so faithful. Amen. So in Hebrews chapter 6, starting in verse 11, it says, and we desire each one of you to show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. Till the end of what? Till the end of your faith. Till your faith comes to manifestation. That's what it is. Till your faith comes to the, the, the end, end of the, well, the end of the rainbow. Amen? <laughs> and there's gold at the end. The promise of God. Amen? I, I find that just wonderful that God, the rainbow is a picture of God's promises. God promised he would never again flood the earth because he gave that rainbow. Well, we need to tr trust God with our hope and, and follow it, right, to the end, to the end result. That you do not become, see, what, what hope does is this in verse 12, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. See, we're inheritors. We inherit the promises. And we do it with our faith and with hope, which is the substance. Faith, faith is the substance of our hope. And so um, we can also see in, in 18 and 19 of that chapter, it says, By two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. So, so the first thing is, it's impossible for God to lie. And because it's impossible for God to lie, the second thing is that we might have strong consolation who have fled from, fled for refuge and lay hold of the hope that is set before us. See, hope needs to be set before you. Jesus, what, what happened? For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He had, he had his hope out there, his joy. It was set before him, and that's what helped him to, to be strong, even when he was facing the adverse circumstances of the cross, and the mockings, and the beatings, and the, 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 where his beard was ripped. and I mean, just everything that Jesus went through. He did it because he had the joy that was set before him. That was his hope. That was us. Amen? Amen. And so it goes on to say, This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil. That hope is what keeps us connected to the presence of God. That enters the presence beyond the veil. Your hope is what keeps you. It's that link that keeps you connected to the power of God in your life. It's an anchor of your soul. Your soul will, will, will waver without hope. And so what happens is that just like a ship, when it puts the anchor down, that's what keeps it in one place, your hope will keep you, keep your mind stayed on God. It will keep your mind, even when, when the waves are hitting the boat or the ship, that anchor is keeping it in place. Amen? Amen. Amen. Whew, God is good. Amen. I'm excited. See, see, natural, see, I'm talking about hope that comes from the Word of God. Natural hope is different. Natural hope is uncertain. It depends on circumstances. You know, if this turns out like this, then I have hope in this. But, but circumstances in this life change constantly. Yep. So if you put your hope in circumstances, then you're going to be bouncing around like a ship without an anchor. Yep. But, but the Word of God never changes. The Word of God is sure and steadfast. Yes. And the, the Word of God promises that God will never lie. 
He said it. I believe it. That settles it. Hallelujah. And so, so we can see that 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 you know, natural hope depends on circumstances. Circumstances change. Your hope changes. But biblical hope is based on the Word of God, and that is strong. That is steadfast. That is an anchor to your soul. So, so hope is an anchor to our soul. You know, we can see this in the natural, people trying to, you know, lose weight. Anyone here ever go on a diet? And, and, and so, you know, you're, here you are, you don't, have, you don't have to raise your hand, okay? We've all been down that road. Some of us have been more successful than others. But, uh, so, uh, you know, the thing is, is when you're trying to lose weight, you, you know, the first thing you do is you lose hope if you don't see a change in the scale. <laughs> you know? You're looking at the scale and you're saying, ah, oh, no change. Ah, you know? I should have ate the burger. It didn't, it didn't change anything, you know. Uh, or, or, you know, your clothes are still the same fitting you just as snug as they were. You know? your, your belt is still at the same notch, you know. You start looking at that and and, and what happens is you lose hope. That's why people, they, they lose, they, they don't stay on their diet because they're like, what's the use? <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh. Wow, that was loud. What's the use? Because, you know, the thing is, is you're looking at all the natural circumstances instead of saying, you know what? I'm going to stick to this diet and it's going to happen. You see, we, when, when Norma went to Jenny Craig, she did go, was I supposed to give that information? It's already out there. Oh, it's out there. <laughs> what they, you know what they told her to do? I, I didn't ask for permission to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. A long time ago. A long time ago. But uh, what they told Norma to do is they said, do you have any clothes that you used to fit into that fit you really, you know, you really liked? And, and Norma's like, yeah, a certain dress. And they said, hang that up and be looking at it every day. That's your motivation. That you're gonna start seeing yourself yeah. wearing that dress. Do you see that? Yeah. Getting the hope out there. This is a totally unplanned I know. illustration. <laughs> Whoops. But but you know, and you, you, she got to that place. Praise God. Amen. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. So. <laughs> all right. So. <laughs> You know, but but if if things don't change, then what happens is we get frustrated, we quit, and we, we fail to persevere. See, losing hope causes you to fail to persevere. Yeah. Still got an hour, right? Uh, now now Hebrews ten twenty three, it says, "Let us hold fast the confession of our hope, without wavering, for he who promised is faithful." Hold. Why do we hold fast the, the, the profession of our hope? Because it's based on His promises. He is faithful who promised. God is going to fulfill His work. Amen? You, you get this? This will revolutionize your life. It will transform you. You know, um, that, that, that thing called the... Anyone ever see on, on TV that, that Rosetta Stone? You know? And it teaches you how to speak another language. The reason why that is so successful is because it doesn't just work with words. It, it goes with pictures and words. It teaches you how to speak a new language because you begin to identify words with a picture. You get the picture? <laughs> and so it helps people learn a new language. Well, God works the same way. God gave us his word, but he also... Gave us the word so we could get a picture. See, God wants us to learn a new language. He wants us to learn the language of faith. Amen. And so this is our Rosetta Stone. Amen. Amen. It's teaching us how to learn how to, to live the faith life. Amen. How to speak the language of faith. Amen. Woo, glory to God. Amen. See, Romans 8.25 says... But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance. See, if you lose hope, you lose perseverance. And so we want to make sure that we... And it, that means that if you lose perseverance, that's because you what? You lost hope. But you know what? 
If you feel that you're losing perseverance, just go back to the Word of God and get more hope. It's all in there. Amen? Amen. We've got to keep our eyes on the Word of God. Keep our eyes on the promises. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let's jump on over there real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. You all getting something out of this? Amen. Yeah. We, we need to, to, to hold on to our hope. 2 Corinthians 4.16. Did I say 6? 4.16. Okay. It says here, Therefore we do not lose heart or lose hope. Amen? That, or lose, you know, your confidence. That's another way of putting it. Even though the outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Now look at this in verse 18. While we do not look at things that are seen, the five physical senses, we don't look at things that are seen, but but things that are not seen. Not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things what? Not seen. Not seen. There you go. So we're looking at our hope. See, not, not seen in a natural physical, but you are seeing it. You're seeing it with the eyes of your imagination. You're seeing it with the eyes of hope. Hallelujah. You're seeing yourself with the promise of God. And, and so it says, for, for the things which are seen are temporal. Now that word temp, or temporary, that word temporary means subject to change. You want some things changed in your life? Then, then get your eyes on something else. You know, if you're dealing with sickness, guess what? It's subject to change. If you're dealing with, with poverty, guess what? It's subject to change. But you've got to keep your eyes on the promises of God. But the things which are not seen are eternal. The Word of God is eternal. It will always be sound. It will always be secure. God is taking care of us. Amen? Amen. In, in Colossians 3... 1 and 2 says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are, what? Above. Amen. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on, on the earth. So we're supposed to have a heavenly mindset. We're supposed to set our mind on the things above. What's in heaven? There's no sickness in heaven. There's no poverty in heaven. So we've got to be kingdom minded. We need to be praying, God's kingdom come. God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We've got to have our minds set on the things of heaven, not on the things of the earth, because God can change those things. But that, that's what keeps you persevering. Get your, get your eyes off of the circumstances and the situations. Keep your eyes focused on God. He's the God of all hope. We need to be setting our mind on, on that. Now, here's the thing. We, there's three basic keys, three main keys to meditation. Meditation is God. It's, it's, it's a godly thing. God's the one who came up with meditation, not the New Age movement and all that. That's right. You don't empty. Meditation does not mean emptying out your mind. Meditation means filling your mind. You're filling your mind with the Word of God. You're Amen. filling your mind with the promises of God. Amen. That's godly meditation. In the Bible, what meditate means is the word is hagah, and it means to ponder, imagine, meditate, and mutter. Mutter means you're talking to yourself. Anyone here ever talk to yourself? Yes. Yeah, I've done that. Amen. Dave's like, yeah, he does it all the time, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, here, here's the three, three parts to it. First of all, spend time with God in prayer. Spend time with God. Number two, Imagine yourself. Use your imagination. That's what God gave you the imagination for. Imagine yourself possessing God's promises. And number three, mutter or speak God's promises to yourself. Them are the three keys to, to, to biblical meditation. Spend time with God in prayer. Connect with Him. Amen? Uh, imagine yourself possessing God's promises. See yourself blessed. See yourself healed. See yourself the way the Word of God says you are. And then begin to mutter or speak those promises to yourself. 
Talk to yourself. Anyone here ever um, assemble anything, fix anything? You know? Yeah, you know, and, and it's usually from China or, or Taiwan <laughs> or something. I can't understand what they're they're saying. Uh, it's crazy, and it's in English, but it just isn't quite. Co things aren't connecting. I, anyone ever create something different <laughs> with what they got than what? You know, I've done it a couple times, yeah. and then you have to take it all back apart. So, so um, you know, the thing is, as you assemble in that, what 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 you what you're doing is. You, what I like to do is I like to get the box with a picture on it. Okay? Now I got the words in front of me, but sometimes I just it just isn't con connecting. But but while I have the words, I'm looking at the words and I'm looking at the box. I'm looking at the words, I'm looking at the box. What am I doing? I'm meditating. I'm seeing the finished product and I'm I'm reading the words. I'm speaking the words. This part A goes into B and D goes into F. Oh, no, it doesn't go into F. You know? <laughs> so, so, you know, and, and so we do this We do this all the time when we're building something. You start to get a picture of it in your mind. That's what artists do. They get a picture in their mind and they paint it out. They're using their imagination. They're being creative with their imagination. And, you know, um, when, when, okay, ladies, when, when you're out shopping, right, grocery shopping, and, and you're trying to remember what you're out of, all of a sudden, you go to the refrigerator. And in your mind, you're saying, this is the first shelf, this is the second shelf, the third shelf. You're getting a picture, a mental, a mental picture of what is in there, what or what isn't in there. Uh, well, I didn't see the gallon of milk today. The kids finished it off. Okay, need milk. Uh, and so what happens is you're not only doing that, but you're also talking to yourself. You're saying, okay, uh, milk. Cereal. Uh, I'm making everybody hungry. Chicken. Chicken. <laughs> fajitas. Hey, Amen. Mm. Now you guys are really making me hungry. Okay. So, so, but, but see, the thing is, what I'm telling you is, you, you're meditating all the time. The Bible wants us to meditate on the Word of God. So now you look at the Word of God and you say, healed. And now you got a picture of, I'm healed. I can do what God says I can do. Amen. I have what God says I have. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, I am who God says I am. Amen. Amen. Now, in Joshua 1 a, it says this. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. You shall, uh, that, that you may observe to do according to all that is written. See, you meditate on it to do it. And so, that you may observe to do all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. The meditation comes first. Amen. The seeing, you observe it, you're seeing it, you observe to do it, and then you have good success. That's God's formula. That is God's way of, of getting things accomplished. Amen. 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 <clears throat> and, and so, you know, God taught Abraham the secret of meditation, hope, and faith so that he could inherit the promises of God. And, and you know, Abraham, he, he just... Basically, God said, do this, and that's what God, that's what Abraham did. It was pretty easy for him. He just followed directions. Can we follow directions? Amen. Amen. All right, let's be, be uh, doers of the word, not just hearers. Amen. Let's go to, to Romans. We only got a few more scriptures left here. I could talk all day on this, but we're not going to. Amen. I want you to digest this. I get it. So, Romans chapter 4. Starting in verse 17. This is Abraham. Abraham is our example. He's the father of our faith, right? That's what the Bible says. Okay, so starting in verse 17, it says, As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and who calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Wow. Wow. You know, this is a principle of God right here. <coughs> and God's not lying. God God saw darkness and he, he called out light, right? Yes. God, God calls those things that don't exist as though they do. Amen. God already, see, God, he's the God of hope, which means he uses hope too. So, so God also works with pictures. God has, he sees what he wants. 
And then he goes out and speaks it, and then it comes. That's the way it works. And God designed us to function the same way. Amen. And so it goes on to say, in verse 18, there we go. Who contrary to hope, see everything looked hopeless to Abraham. In hope, he believed. See, without hope, he couldn't believe. So in hope, hope was the first step. He got hope and then he believed. In hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. God gave him a promise and, and, and Abraham stayed focused on that promise. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body.